Okay, so when we have negative two to the fourth power and no grouping symbol or parentheses there, it means opposite of two to the fourth power. An equivalent expression for that would be two times two times two times two in parentheses with a negative in front. There is an invisible one there. The invisible one is right here. What happens when we have parentheses? We do everything on the inside first. Remember order of operations, which we'll be reviewing in a second. So that means the value of this is gonna be negative 16. When I have negative two inside of parentheses raised to the fourth power, that means negative two to the fourth power. An equivalent expression to that is negative two in parentheses times negative two times negative two times negative two. And what would be the result when we multiply all those? Positive 16. When we have the negative in front of the parentheses and the two is raised to the fourth power, the meaning is opposite of two to the fourth power. <clears throat> and it looks just like the first one when we do an equivalent expression. Negative outside the parentheses all positive twos on the inside. And we get a negative 16. Okay, that last one means opposite of negative two to the fourth power. Because there's a negative captured inside the parentheses, this one's equivalent expression is a little bit more challenging. We're gonna have a negative outside of a bigger parentheses, and then inside that, we have four negative twos inside their own parentheses. and we get negative 16. So a quick shortcut on this, and I would like you to get these notes right down here. A negative inside parentheses equals a negative the results. In this case, because we're raised to the fourth power. If we're raised to the third power, that may not be the case. Versus a negative without parentheses or outside of parentheses. That equals opposite. Okay, with that, we're gonna turn the page and look at how what I've had you glue in is a little bit different than PEMDAS that you've learned before. And I have my pages stuck together.
The major difference from what you guys have learned before is that first letter. What is it not? P. A P. Why do you think it's a G instead? Grouping symbols. Take a look at what you glued on the other side. The grouping symbols are all listed here. Grouping symbols include parentheses and brackets and braces, absolute value bars, radical signs, and a fraction line. So sometimes on social media, you'll see people putting out crazy problems and having people argue about them. Maybe not you, because you're not a math teacher, but I see this. And a lot of times it will be around a problem written with a division symbol versus a problem written as a fraction. Because when it's written with a division symbol, order of operation says it gets done down here. If it's written as a fraction, it gets done here. So how we write things is really important, which is why, I can't remember who it was, but somebody put that symbol in the middle that could have looked like a division symbol and I clarified, right? That's really important. Here's a cool vocabulary. This is called a vinculum. Everybody say it? That is the line that divides every fraction. Okay? We will do some work tomorrow with order of operations since we are out of time thanks to our fire drill.